Right friends, welcome back to second capsule. This is on bilateral investment treaties and tribal rights. What is the present issue? Look at this news item. Recently what happened? The agreement between this Rakhia given to Unrock Aluminium Limited. This Rakhia is Rack Investment Authority which belongs to United Arab Emirates. This Rack Investment Authority, in fact, there was an agreement between Andhra Pradesh government and Unrock Aluminium Limited. This is supposed to establish one aluminium company near Visakhapatnam at a place called Shrungavarapu Kota. And here proposed aluminium factory is supposed to come up and there were vehement protests from tribal groups. Subsequently, deal between Andhra Pradesh government and Rakia was cancelled and Rakia filed arbitration case under India-UAE Bilateral Investment Treaty. Under India-UAE Bilateral Investment Treaty, Rakia filed an arbitration case. And this is not new to our country. And we are going to deliberate exactly what is meant by Bilateral Investment Treaty and what are the tribal rights under various acts and why there is a conflict coming up, right? So, before going ahead, tribals and India, let us have a snapshot on this. In India, tribals constitute around 8% of population. In our country, tribal population is around 8% and they inhabit lands which are basically rich in minerals. If you look at the statistics, around 90% of coal deposits and 50% of other minerals are situated in the areas primarily inhabited by tribals. And these areas or you can say these mineral resources are required by the government for development of the country. And they are being displaced. And here you see the irony. Because of displacement, they are affected, sometimes worst affected, but if you look at the other side, it is benefiting other sections of society. So, what I mean to convey is, the biggest sufferers because of displacement are the indigenous tribal people and at the same time, the beneficiaries are the other people in the country. So, there is a quite a paradox situation normally. When any displacement occurs, they should be benefited. But in the case of tribals, they are being displaced and the development fruits are enjoyed by other sections of society. And here, tribals constitute 8%, but they contribute to total 40 to 50% of overall displacements in the country. Tribals contribute to around 40 to 50 percent of uh, overall displacements in the country and the basic theme of uh, indigenous people or tribals is basically freedom to live in their own traditional ways but this is being flouted and what are the world conventions if you look at world conventions one important convention is convention concerning indigenous and tribal peoples 1989 this is ILO convention and it says respect for the cultures and ways of life of indigenous peoples must be there and the convention recognizes their right to land and natural resources and defines their own priorities for development. This is ILO convention of 1989. So, if you go ahead, another important convention of United Nations is there. United Nations declaration on the rights of indigenous people or UNDRIP 2007 is there. It is United Nations declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples and India is also a signatory and it recognizes among other things indigenous people's rights to self-determination, autonomy or self-governance. Basically, it talks about 
indigenous people's determination or self determination for autonomy or self governance basically it talks and it is against forceful displacement and relocation from their lands or territories without free fair or informed consent so in the conventions they cannot be displaced without free fair or informed consent so free fair or informed consent is the hallmark of this convention but these are being flouted day and night in our country right if you look at the constitutional provisions then after knowing about these conventions let us look at the constitutional provisions constitution specifically delegated two schedules schedule 5 and schedule 6 of the constitution for the rights of these people schedule 5 and schedule 6 schedule 5 is for the states other than northeast schedule 6 is for four northeastern states special provisions are kept schedule 5 is for the states other than northeastern states and four states of northeastern are in schedule 6 so in constitution under article 244 special provisions are given under schedule 5 and schedule 6 to protect the rights of the people then in samata versus state of andhra pradesh judgment of 1997 supreme court stated that transfer of tribal land to private parties for mining was null and void under the fifth schedule we are going to deliberate on constitutional provisions as well as samata judgment briefly and there are statutory provisions also statutorily if you see recognition of forest rights act 2006 recognition of forest rights act so what i want to convey is india is a signatory to international convention united nations declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples at the same time constitutional provisions are there schedule 5 and schedule 6 under article 244 of the constitution more than that there are several statutory provisions to safeguard the interests and one of the statutory provision to safeguard the interests of this tribal people is recognition of forest rights act 2006 and it protects the individual and community rights of tribal people in forest areas and their right to free and fair informed consent this is most important word in case of their displacement and resettlement most important aspect is their free and fair informed consent is to be taken right and if you look at the special provisions under fifth schedule i am not deliberating sixth schedule sixth schedule is as per article 2442 and that is for four northeastern states and it looks at district councils in four northeastern states for the development of uh, tribal communities and sixth schedule clearly talks about tribal areas whereas the fifth schedule talks about scheduled areas please remember fifth schedule talks about scheduled areas sixth schedule talks about tribal areas that is for northeastern states so now if you look at the fifth schedule under article 2441 what are the special provisions given special provisions are governor to send report annually to the president regarding the administration of scheduled areas and at present scheduled areas are recognized in 10 states previously scheduled areas were there in nine states now with the formation of telangana now the states with scheduled areas are 10 so president can declare scheduled areas under paragraph 6 of the fifth schedule so these scheduled areas can be modified can be declared and governor has to send a report to the president annually with regard to the administration of scheduled areas then tribal advisory council is to be established in each state and predominantly 
members of the legislative assembly will be the members of this tribal advisory council and tribal advisory council is to be established in each state having scheduled areas and another important aspect is governor may by public notification direct that any particular act of parliament or of legislature shall not apply to the scheduled areas so please understand scheduled areas are given lot of prominence as far as the constitutional provisions are concerned as per fifth schedule similar provisions are there for northeastern states four northeastern states as per sixth schedule then if you look at important aspects of this fifth schedule governor can make regulations so governor can make regulations prohibit or restrict the transfer of land by or among the members of scheduled tribes so here governor may impose regulations such as prohibition or a restriction on the transfer of land in scheduled areas some people loosely talk about tribal areas but the right word for the states is scheduled areas then regulate the allotment of land to the members of sts in such area then regulate the carrying on of business as money lenders so the exploitation of money lenders is also prohibited in scheduled areas so lot many safeguards were given but these are being flouted by one after the other state governments then samata judgment this is very important if you look at tribal rights samata judgment of 1997 it permitted mining activity as long as it is undertaken by we are talking about scheduled areas it permitted mining activity as long as it is undertaken by either government or instrumentality of a state that means established by the state then a cooperative society of the tribals so mining activity can take place in these areas only by government or by the body established by the government or a cooperative society of the tribals so final conclusion is all the lands leased by the government to the private mining companies was stated as null and void as per samata judgment so lot many rights are given now what are the present day problems the problems are between this tribal's rights and development so here the rights of the tribal people are being flouted and the same was highlighted by one committee in 2014 and the state is more concerned about fulfilling contractual obligations towards the private investors then another important point is in predominantly tribal dominated states also number of mous were signed without considering the rights of the people then chatisgarh and jharkhand these two are predominantly tribal dominated states chatisgarh and jharkhand have entered into 121 and 74 memorandum of understandings with various private players without taking into consideration the rights of the tribal people then the purpose of bilateral investment treaties you may have a doubt what is meant by bilateral investment treaty bilateral investment treaty is signed between two sovereign countries basically to protect each other's investments indians may have investments in uae uae may have investments in our country and both the investments are to be protected in each other's countries that is the purpose of bilateral investment treaty so this is signed between two sovereign countries so here the purpose of bilateral investment treaties is to give protection to foreign investors no doubt about it but the important point is the rights of tribals are not being considered at the time of agreements this is the biggest unfortunate part then what happens when the protests are more state government yield to the demand of the tribal people because of protests by the tribal people the aluminum factory 
was cancelled, that agreement was cancelled. So, when the protests are more, state governments yield to the demand of the tribal people and that will be detrimental to the foreign investors. Subsequently, what happens? Foreign investors will go for arbitration. So, the biggest question is why these things are not contemplated well in advance. India is a signatory to the convention and India has got constitutional provisions in the form of 5th schedule and 6th schedule and at the same time there is one Forest Rights Act of 2006 and why India is not considering these aspects before signing bilateral investment treaties and all these things must be kept in mind before signing any agreement under bilateral investment treaty and if that is the case incidents like rakia can be avoided then sometimes judiciary also may cancel the permits of the foreign investor sometimes judiciary also comes into picture and it cancels the investments or permits of the foreign investor in scheduled areas and this is the same exactly happened and there is one classic example of vedanta in 2013 that is Varissa Mining Corporation versus Ministry of Environment and Forests. Then foreign investors may drag India to investor treaty arbitrations. So, at the time of signing the agreement, governments do not bother about various protections given to the tribal people and subsequently, if the agreements are cancelled, then there is every possibility under the bilateral investment treaty, foreign investor may go for investor treaty arbitration. So, as a threat of investor treaty arbitration is there, several times what happens? States may compel to go for coercive methods in tribal areas. That is what is being happened several times. So, a balance is to be struck between the protecting the rights of the indigenous people and at the same time development in our country. Next, what is the solution? Here I listed out 4-5 points. To avoid this investor treaty arbitration cases by the foreign investors, the government's approach should be to include provisions relating to protection of indigenous people in BITs itself. Then world experience shows that in Canada, there are several exceptions to protect the rights of indigenous people and even Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement also incorporated several provisions pertaining to one particular tribe in New Zealand. Then now the government is in the process of negotiating existing BITs and now the government thought that some of the BITs are favorable to the investors and detrimental to the domestic interests and now government is in the process of modifying bilateral investment treaties and while modifying bilateral investment treaties this aspect of rights to the tribal people must be taken care of so implementation of domestic legislations for the protection of rights of tribals must go hand in hand with modifications to BITs and tribal people should be given representation even in the investment policy making in our country. So, the standoff between bilateral investment treaties and tribals rights is to be bridged and each and every bilateral investment treaty must take care of the rights of the people as per the statutory as well as constitutional provisions in our country. So, the government should devise BITs without harming the interests of the tribal people. So, tribal people versus foreign investors, some middle way must be found because development is also important for the country. Right friends, with this let us conclude second capsule. Have a nice day. Thank you.